Why, hello, I'm Andrew, and today I would like to teach you how to use the factor theorem to find the zeros of this polynomial function. Now, what they gave us is that they also gave us a factor, all right, so that we can kind of apply this uh, factor theorem. So basically what the factor theorem uh, tells us is that if you take this factor and you divide it into this polynomial function and you get a remainder of zero, then this is a factor. Uh, basically now we have to kind of prove that. So we can use the remainder theorem or we can do synthetic division. I'm going to use the remainder theorem just because it's a little bit faster. So it says that the whenever you have a function being divided by some linear function, basically x minus k, you can call this a or j, it doesn't really make a difference. But the remainder of this process will be equal to the function's value evaluated at a value of k. So what you have to do is this is the, uh, we're doing a division now, right? We're taking this function and we're dividing this factor into it. And we're going to see what the remainder is. If the remainder is zero, then this is a factor. If the remainder is not zero, then this is not a factor. Okay. So what we're going to do is we just have to identify what K is, right? So X minus K, notice how this is already in that form. So K is going to be a one. An easier way to find k here, once you know your linear function, right, we're dividing this into that function, uh, is just set it equal to zero, right, and solve it for x, and then whatever the result is, is a one. Well, what, <laughs> well, in this problem, it's a one. Whatever the result is, I meant to say is k, right, that's going to be the value of k. This method works nicely in case you have a coefficient here of like seven, right, then the k value would have been one seventh. Um, but anyway, so k value for this problem is one. Now, if I go in and I plug in, basically what this is saying now is if you take the K value, which we said is going to be one, and then you plug it in for every X now, minus nine, one squared plus 13 times one minus six. If this works out to be zero, then I know this is a factor. And if this is a factor, I also know the value of a zero. It's just gonna be one, right? So. Let's see if we evaluate and let's see what it comes out to be. So this is going to be two. This is going to be minus nine. This is going to be plus 13 minus six. So what do we have here? So we have two minus nine, right? You could do that negative seven plus 13. And then why don't we do this 13, right? Minus six. That's going to work out to be a positive seven. And oh my goodness. Notice it works out. The remainder is going to be zero. This is the remainder. It's zero. So this is a factor. If that's a factor to find the zero, then you just also set it equal to zero and find the value of X. So not only is K, not only did we find the value of K, but we also found basically a zero, right? K and a zero is the same thing in this problem. So what we can now do is we can now do synthetic division. Sorry, I had to think about what I was gonna do next. So we can now do synthetic division on this thing. Maybe we should have just done that first because it might have killed two birds with one stone, right? But let's set that on up. Here we go. Bam. So to set up your synthetic division table, just look at your highest power of X, add one to it, and that'll tell you the number of columns. So we need four columns. So here in goes the coefficient of the X cubed term. This will go in the coefficient of the X squared. This is X and that's your constant. So the coefficient of the X cubed term is a two. Coefficient of the x squared term is going to be a negative 9, x is going to be 13, and the constant is negative 6. Cool. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this negative 1, uh, x minus 1, excuse me, set it equal to 0 and solve it for x, which we already did over here, right? So we're actually finding the value of k, or we're trying to test whether, uh, we're trying to test this 0, so to speak. So then you're going to drop down the 2, and you're just going to follow a simple series of steps. It's going to be 2 times the 1, that's going to be a 2. Add this on up. That's going to be a negative 7. Then take the negative 7, multiply by 1, put it over here. That's a negative 7. Add that on up, right? And 13 minus uh, 7 is going to be a 6. And then 6 times 1 is going to be positive 6. And when you add that all up, right, it's a 0. And that's already what we found with the remainder theorem. So we kind of didn't really need to. Probably should have just did synthetic division right from the start. It would have saved us a little time. But hey, what are you going to do? Sometimes the scenic route is fun. Next thing you want to do is remember what your, remember what these values represent. Okay, this is the constant term. This is going to be the x, the coefficient of the x term, and this is going to represent the coefficient of the x squared term. It does not follow the same pattern as up here. I know this column represented x cubed, but that's only for this value. 
Okay. Also, I'm running through the synthetic division a little quickly because hopefully at this point, doing the factor theorem, you should have already done synthetic division. If you need more help on that, check out my channel. We have thousands of videos out there. Well, not, not in synthetic division, but we have, uh, I don't know, 70 videos maybe, maybe more, um, solving specific problems using synthetic division, which I go painstakingly slow through it. All right. So um, here, uh, what we realize now is when I take this function, right, this is going to be 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 13x minus 6, and I divided it then by x minus 1, the result is this quotient down here. It's going to be 2x squared, 2x squared, minus 7x, minus 7x, plus 6. Okay? So in other words, right, uh, I can kind of do a little cross multiplication here if I wanted, and I can bring this x minus 1 on over to the right-hand side. Okay? So what you're going to see now is you're going to see that I already have one of the factors here. Now I just have to kind of factor this thing on out, right? And we can think about doing this in a couple of ways. We might want to use the quadratic equation, all right? Or um, what we can do is we can use a, oh, I don't know if I want to say it, a program. We can use a program you can put into your calculator to quickly find the roots, right? The zeros. Take a look in the description. I'm going to leave a link to a video I have for you to program that TI calculator of yours. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it on into the calculator. Let's clean this up. So this represents your A value. This represents your B value. And this represents your C value. Right, so A is going to be equal to 2. B is going to be equal to negative 7. C is going to be equal to 6. Now you can also use the quadratic equation here, which says that X is going to be equal to negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over then 2A. And what you'd have to do then is plug in the A, B's, and the C's in here to find your X's. Or you can program your calculator and do it in about three seconds. All right, so open up that program. Again, take a look in the description below. I'll leave you a link. Uh, so this A is 2, B is negative 7, and C is 6. And OMG, it got me the roots, right? So X here is going to be equal to either 1.5 or X will also be equal to 2. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. These are the other zeros, okay? So what are the zeros of this function? Well, the zeros are x plus 1, as we saw, 1.5 or 3 halves, and 2. These are the zeros. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully that helps. And uh, I'd love to help you with more, so check out more videos. We'll see you soon. Bye.